Hey everybody, it's Abigail Ockwell here and welcome back to another whipping chat. Now if you're new here, WHIP stands for work in progress. Oh my gosh, it feels like it's been so long since I've done one of these. So as you guys can see, I've got my light pad on. I don't usually have my light pad on and there is a reason. Because <clears throat> a couple of months ago I got ready to film another, I got ready to film a whipping chat and... I was just tightening up my lamp as I normally do and then the base broke. So I was like, okay, now I cannot record a video. Um, I hope that's okay for you. I'm just going to pop you out a little bit more. There we go, that was better. So I was like, okay, I can't actually record a video. But silly me forgot that she had a light pad and so I was like ah oh, yay I can go I can record so I went to record with my light pad as I normally do and uh, yeah the um let's just say that the thing is a little bit faulty so I was like, okay, right, I need to go and buy myself, you know, uh, a new magnetic thing. So you know these, like, magnetic, like, inserts that you can get. I've actually got one here. It isn't the same one, but one of these ones, and you have, like, a cable attached to it, and you can change the head for whatever you need it to. Um... So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to buy myself one of them so that hopefully my thing doesn't get worse. So I had to wait for that to come in. Which uh, was in uh, mid-December, which it didn't come until mid-December. So I was like, well, I'm not going to be filming any weapon chats this side of Christmas with my um, Advent unboxings happening. So I was like, well, you know what, I am just going to have to, um, you know, do everything in the new year. I also have a new tripod. So the tripod that I use when my table is down, um, yes, I have the tilt on my table at the moment. Um, so, um, Normally, what would stop that moving would be the light. So I'd normally have it partially up and it wouldn't move. But because of how old it's got and also part of it has bent, like the metal bit has bent somehow. I don't know how, but I'm not worrying about it now. So as a result, if I put the camera on it when I want to use my tilt, I can't. So I had to get um, a new one of those. So yeah, basically all my equipment basically broke. Um, so that that's basically why I haven't really used, um, I haven't really done whipping chats like for the last two <laughs> months. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. Happy New Year. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I'm currently working on Sneaky Cat, which is, <laughs> have I got the dimensions here? No, I don't. Of course I don't. Um, where did I fling my phone? Actually, you know what? I can't be bothered to look for my phone. I'm going to pop the dimensions down here. And obviously this is a square kit. Now this is one with the old drills. So uh, the squares aren't the best. But I'm working with it. I'm actually able to work with it. Um, and also in the new year I'm actually planning to do something rather fun with my square drills. So I have so many spares of drills it's unreal so um as you guys know i cross stitch and you may remember that diamond art club this is where this is from did those princess panels like 
and then they discontinued them a couple of years ago. Well, this cross-stitching company called Creatively Stitching uh, have, they uh, sell legally licensed um, cross-stitch kits and they actually happen to do the uh, princess ones. So I'm going to convert one of the ones I don't have. Hello, Josh. Hey, darling. Yes, Misty is in the room. Um, what was I going on about? I was... I've completely forgotten what I was going on about. Oh, yes, I remember what I was going on about. I was going on about the uh, princess panels that I'm not going to do. I have most of them. There are a couple that I'm missing. Um, and then there are a couple that I've actually given... That I've done, but I've given away, so... Um, so, uh, the daughter of the undersea king, so Ariel, I've done her, but I've given her away. And then I also did, um, the Snow Queen and One Worth Melting For, which obviously are Elsa and Anna from Frozen. And like I say, I've, I've done those. And I've given them away. I've also done, last year I did Tiana. Um, so, yeah, like I say, I've got most of them, but I haven't got all of them. So, those that didn't go into diamond paintings are actually, um, you know, uh, they, they are still, that they are available, but as a cross stitch, so... I've seen a lot of people do it where they've got a cross stitch pattern and then they have diamond painted it. So instead of cross stitching it, they have diamond painted it. And I mean, I would never. I mean, you've, the for those that have them, the size of those diamond paint of those diamond painting kits are massive, and the cross stitch ones are like even bigger and I'm like I haven't got the patience to do that so yeah I would rather diamond paint something big than cross stitch something as bad as big and I mean some of the stuff from heaven and earth designs they also do diamond painting canvases I want to do one of them but I am not going to be buying for a while because obviously getting a house um But yeah, I am, I'm just like, well, I'm not going to cross stitch you. I would never cross stitch you. So therefore, I'm going to diamond paint you. So I got a blank canvas and I actually cut it in half. So therefore, I have two um, ones worth. And I've actually got the kit, the charts on my tablet. And yeah, I am hoping to do those some point next year. So I have basically, I've got a bag of my spare drills, the ones that I have that I need. I'm also going to be using, because obviously cross stitching, you know, you can use special thread, but obviously it doesn't show you where to use like specialty. You know, obviously this isn't a diamond painting. I'm converting it from a cross stitch chart to an actual diamond painting. So, yeah, I will be doing that next year. And that will be one of those ones that you won't see all the time. It'll be one that I can pop out when I feel like it. And also if I've got enough drills to do a section... I can pop it out and do it as well but it's definitely not one that I can do constantly like I do with an actual kit because I'm having to kit this up myself you know um with the drills that are in my stash this could take a, a little bit of a slower process so those ones that you know they don't have the correct die a lot or something um you know it won't matter because they'll be in 
uh, because they will be in the actual thing, so, yeah, if things are a little bit off, I don't care. But, yeah, it'll be fun. I, I gotta admit, I've wanted to do it for a while, and I did finally bite a bullet, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um, I do apologise if the angle is also a little bit funny because, um, yeah, I've kind of had to put it this way because I did try and extend the pole that my camera is on, but it didn't like that. So therefore, um, yeah, I've had to put it, the camera at a slightly funny angle. However, looking at it from my bed, I'm not done painting on my bed. But from when I was setting it up and looking at the angle, it didn't actually look too bad. But, yeah, so that is that. Yeah, I've got a lot to catch up on. Um, I don't know how long this one is going to be. I'm going to try and aim for about an hour. But, you know, it might go a little bit over. It might go a little bit under. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I have done really well. We have, we've got through the worst of the, uh, Christmas holidays. Um, so we had Avatar, Way of the Water, out, uh, over the Christmas holidays days over here um oh my god seriously dad can you not sorry I do apologize if you can hear my dad in the background he happens to always always decide to be really verbal when he's on the bar when he's on the loo I don't know why but he does, and when I'm doing a video, it's really, really, really annoying. And people might say, oh, put a sign up, let him know. My dad wouldn't even bother to read it. And he'd be like, but I didn't see it. I'd be like, yeah, because you walked straight past it. And also, my dad likes to keep the bathroom door open. Well, I mean, we all do, but it's like, because we're not allowed to really close it unless there are people around. So the reason we're not allowed to close it is my cat, Midnight, she lays on the landing just outside the toilet because obviously, you know, animals know that when you're on the loo, you are at your most vulnerable. Uh, you know, take, uh, what was it, King Henry, Henry the Thir First, I think it was Henry the First, I think, don't quote me on that though, um, so, uh, Henry the First, King of England, um, he basically died on the toilet from eating lampreys, and then there was another king that was stabbed, through the bottom whilst on the toilet and I've forgotten who that was so yeah you know um she will not let you unless there are like guests around she uh will not if you like try and close the door slightly she will get up from her perch and she will butt the door open I'm so glad you guys don't have smell of vision. I can smell from here. And then Dad's going to spray that horrible uh, air freshener that sets my asthma off. I don't mean it. it. It does. It's not nice. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah. That's why, why we can't really close the door when... 
there are people around, you know. Obviously, if we've got guests around, we'll close and lock the door, so there's no way she can headbutt it open. However, um, if there are small children around, um, our cats tend to make themselves pretty scarce. Midnight um, is getting more tolerant of, old, of uh, younger children in her old age. I don't know if I've told you the story, but my eldest niece, Rhiannon, when she was seven and we got Midnight, you know, Midnight used to, you know, love everyone when she was younger except small children. And she would run around, she'd come here and she'd run around and she'd go, <clears throat> I really hope my cat, I really hope she's not in the thing because she's going to get traumatised if she hears me do this. But she went around and she would go, Midnight, Midnight. And you know you can you can do that to this day, and she will panic. She will panic like anything. So yeah, I I'm kind of hoping that she isn't awake, or she's outside, or she's somewhere not in the vicinity because our eyes. She may come running in here like, where's the small child? But, yeah, no. I've currently got a Misty that's sound asleep. I'm sorry that you can't see my drill field as well as normal. This is just because of how I've had to have the light pad. Um... Fine, it's fine. So what are you guys working on? Are you guys just having a cup of tea? Are you guys, you know, doing everything at work or, yeah. So, yeah, if you're working on something, I'd like to know what it is, you know. Stuff like that is always fun. So I should probably update you on how things have been. So obviously... Last time I left you, I think I was talking about, um, you know, um, going to the hospital with my friend Robin and everything and how, you know, we went to the scan of my niece and, well, not my niece, my godchild, because she is my godchild now. She has been born. Um... Um, so, and also I think I told you the story of, like, this really rude receptionist who thought I was under the age of 18, which is terrible, and, you know, we all, since that, you know, it, we have, you know, me and Josh, we, we've talk, been talking about, you know, when the time comes for, and I'm pregnant, we were thinking, you know, we were saying, because I look so young. There's going to be this elderly woman that comes up and he's like, You should be ashamed of yourself getting pregnant so young. And like him and Josh coming up going, How dare you? He's going, She should be in school, not thinking about raising a child. And then there's me, he's like, I'm not in school. I left school years ago. Or even people trying to hand me like teenage pregnancy leaflets. Because honestly, if you look at me, I do look like I'm in my teens. I look, I probably look like I'm in my mid to late teens. And you know, it, it will be fun. But yeah, um, going on from that, so few weeks after, while I was actually at work on, when was it, was it the, I was due to go on leave on the Sunday, which would have been the 12th of November, and 
not on the Sunday, on the Saturday, which would have been the 12th of November, because obviously we were expecting, you know, Robin to be induced on about the 18th of November. Well, on that Wednesday, which would have been the 9th, I got a frantic call from her saying that they were going to be inducing her the next day and I'm like okay and originally um what was meant to happen is uh my godson Dexter was meant to go to Robin's uh mum and uh not Robin's mum Robin's dad and her step mums and they would look after him for a bit However, she called them to let them know what was going on and they said, oh, we can't have him. He, he, the fact you're being in induced this early is that, you know, this, this is interfering with our plans. How, how, how dare you? they decide to induce you? And they basically were like, no, we're not having him. So Robin calls me and is like, Abigail, I know you weren't meant to, but can you look after Dexter for at least, like, two days? Well, everything, like, goes through. And I was like, yeah, you know what, that's fine. I can look after him. And, yeah, I said, you know what, I'll do it. So, I did game plans and paperwork for the next day. In case, um, you know, I wasn't in at all. And no, I wasn't. Thank God I did everything like a day before. And you know, she was like, you know, she was really nervous. So I went and picked them up the next day, which was the 10th on, um, you know, at they had to be at the hospital for oh, what time was it they had to be at the hospital for 11 o'clock which was when they were going to induce her um so yeah she had to be there for 11 o'clock so i went and picked them up at 10 o'clock we dropped dexter around my house and then we had to go to her her grandma's house um, because she had got some baby clothes for Poppy. Um, and they got there. We got there and they found that she had bought newborn wear. Poppy would need uh, three months. Just because of her size and everything. There was no way she was going to fit in newborn clothes. So, we then had to drive up to the um, supermarket and get some baby clothes. Then I get a call from my mum saying, Abigail, are you sure this is the right suitcase? Um, you know, because there were two suitcases saying, Abigail, um, we have maternity stuff in here. And, you know, uh, I had been told that the stuff, that because uh, the suitcase was pink, I had asked bef when I was getting it out of the car which one was the maternity stuff and which one was Dexter's, and she had said the pink one. And... So I grabbed the pink one because the other one had people on it and um, yeah I got a call saying uh, yeah we have the wrong suitcase. I was like oh no okay. So then I dropped Robin and Will off at the hospital. Robin, uh, Will is Robin's husband. Um, I dropped them off. And then 
I'd go back to Bogner, swap the suitcases, drive back up to Chichester, and yeah. <laughs> Drive back up to Chichester, sort the suitcases, and then come back. I was exhausted. But, yeah, no. So, me and, so me and my mum were, like, looking after him. Um, and, you know, it was all, like, waiting for things to happen. So, they induced her that evening. And then it was like, we were all waste. Then it was all on tent hooks. Now, originally, Josh was going to be looking after Dexter on his own on the Friday so I could go to work. However, um, something happened and he couldn't. So I had to call into work and say, oh, look, I've still got, I'm, I'm, I'm still having to babysit. I'm really sorry, but I'm not coming in. And, you know, my boss, Ben, is incredible I'm just gonna say he's incredible because you know he knew there were he knew I was probably going to be babysitting um at some point which was why I'd taken all the leave as well as him asking me to take leave but um he was like but he was like yeah no it's fine and, you know, I explained the situation of what had happened and she, he was like, yeah, no, don't worry. So I called up the next day and was like, hey, I've, I've still got a babysit. I'm really sorry. I can't come in again. So, yeah, I basically got t two additional days of, of leave, which really didn't feel like leave. Um, and then we, we were all waiting. So by now this is Remembrance Day, the 11th. So I think it was about half seven, I got a text from Will saying that Poppy had been born. Um, if I hadn't mentioned it, yes, they were calling her Poppy. They'd already pre decided on that name. So no, it wasn't because she was born on Remembrance Day that she is called Poppy. However, people are going to think that for years. And, you know, it was like... <laughs> And they'd said, you know, when I dropped Dexter around that, you know, I could come and visit on the weekend. Well, Saturday rolls around. Um, I had to go and drive Will. Oh, yes, because Will was coming to pick him up, like midday uh, Dexter up mid about like midday on Saturday so I drove to uh her grandma's to pick up um Poppy's car seat drove back to the hospital then we drove home and you know Will was like really really like apologetic that I couldn't go and see them because now, I know there's going to be some people that are like, I can't believe that this happened, but uh, Robin's dad scheduled to visit them on the Saturday. Yeah. So, it was a little bit like, Oh, okay. So, yeah, he, he called up and arranged to see them the day after Poppy was born. And I couldn't see them on the Sunday because that was when Robin's nan was visiting. You're probably asking where Robin's mum was in all of this. She, she'd um, flown to America. Um, so, uh, they pre-booked and they'd uh, they'd actually move their holiday a week early so that they could be there for when you know Robin was induced I think but then of course because everything changed and they were like we need to get the baby out now 
so yeah so yeah I've, so yeah um let's just say when uh when uh josh heard that let's just say he really wanted me to take him to the hospital so he could confront robin's dad and say how dare you you know oh you can't get rid of you can't you know look after your current grandson so the moment the new granddaughter's born you're just gonna go and see it so yeah they were a little bit upset however we did uh we did do a video call so robin could see dexter because she hadn't seen him for like three days um and so i was technically you know the first person outside will and robin to see poppy even though I was actually one of the last to get cuddles, but that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind that. Because I can tell you, the wait was worth it. And it was completely and utterly worth it. So, um, Robin and Poppy actually spent two weeks in ICU because poor Poppy kept um kept desaturating when she was feeding which you know was a little bit um you know that was quite sad so um and I think that was probably partly because obviously she was born about three weeks premature but she was well developed. I wasn't worried about them inducing her. That was the one thing. I really wasn't that concerned. I was like, you know, if she's anything like Dexter. So Dexter, when he was born, he was 10 and a half pounds. Poppy was eight pounds seven. So yeah, when it was oh, after like Robin gave birth to Poppy, all the nurses were like coming up and going, oh, hold on, you look familiar. Were you the one that delivered that 10 and a half pound baby? And so she was like, yep. So yeah, and she she even said to me, because um, I saw her after Christmas when I dropped their Christmas presents over. Like I said, you know, she was like, oh, compared to Dexter, she was a breeze pushing out. Because, yes, she didn't naturally. I plan when the time comes to do mine naturally. People are probably going to be thinking, when I say this next bit about it, about, like, you know, when the time comes, people are going to be thinking, you're crazy. I'm not going to do mine with an epidural. And the reason is I am afraid of needles and because of where it has to go in the spine, I will jolt and possibly paralyze myself. That is how definitely afraid I am of needles. So yeah, an epidural is not happening no matter if the doctors try to force me to have one. They will say, "You, we are giving you an epidural. I'll be like, no, you are not. I'm not having a massive needle go in my back end of story so yeah um like i say i was one of the last people to actually have cuddles with her um uh, i had cuddles oh yeah i was i was talking about her being um in hospital and icu for two weeks at one point they did actually uh transfer her down to the prenatal unit uh in portsmouth because of how bad she was dropping and there was a possibility I was going to need to drive up and collect them if they said that they could go home however we were having floods and 
um, like just after um, Chichester, which is obviously the the nearest city, which is where I work. There's um there's one of the little villages that's called Emsworth, and Emsworth was completely cut off. Um, so the main motorway or highway, as you'd say in America, was um, flooded. Um, you know, the back roads were flooded, so I was like, if, so I was like, I'm going to have to check and see if I can even get there, because there is that possibility I might not be able to even get there. So, yeah, thankfully that didn't end up happening, because I was completely cut off. There was no way I would have been able to get to Robin past Emsworth. Um, uh, what else? So, uh, yeah, that was, I think that was a week after she was born. So this would have been like the 18th that all that was happening. Um, and then, okay, so this was why while Poppy was still in the hospital, it still, it still upsets me, and I know it still upsets Robin because, um, you know, we, I saw her on Sunday, because we had a, uh, well, she had, um, for my wedding, which is happening in just over six months, <laughs> oh my god, jeez, um, um, yeah, we had a bridesmaid's fitting, well, she did. So, um, you know, and she, she, you know, she's still not over this. So, um, sort of, I think it was, yeah, this, was, this happened two days before they actually discharged her. So they actually discharged Poppy on my 27th birthday, which would have been two weeks after she was born. So, 25th of November um but I got a frantic call from Robin you know uh saying that you know because obviously everything was really really hard you know um Will had actually taken to drinking and he was actually drunk in charge of an infant which is obviously, you know, a very serious thing, and her children, you know, you know, um, if Robin hadn't come, like, and someone else had reported him, then the kids could have been seized, basically. So, um, yeah, um, basically, uh, one of Robin's relatives had actually seen him out drinking while while he was out uh me josh and robin got to the flat he was saying some really horrible things down the phone and i'm not gonna repeat what he was saying because they were so horrible um you know yes they were both going through not having poppy home and her being in the icu but you know even we were like you should have said something um and we actually because of how violent his temper was we actually had to call the police for a well-being check um well she had to change dexter because he got we got there and his nappy was just wet Even though he was like watching Corey Carson, which is a TV show he likes to watch, um, you know, it, but it it just wasn't a good place. So we we so Robin started to call the, you know, call the police, and she was really upset. And the, and I have to say, I know that you know our services are under a lot of pressure, but. Robin had to repeat certain things umpty um times. And I was actually worried that Robin, that, um, not Robin, that 
Will was actually going to try and hurt her. And, you know, we were saying, we need an officer here. We need an officer here. But they were just asking all these questions. Even though they could hear him yelling in the background. You know, Josh was there and trying to keep him calm. You know, it was like, come on. You know, the dispatcher that we were talking to was you know he was asking you know robin's date of birth umptium times he was asking for will's date of birth umptium times and it was like hello and we were both saying can you get someone here now and he was like going through it and it was like and he just kept like doing it so slowly and we were like come on um we were probably on the phone to the same dispatcher for about five minutes because he kept you know asking the same questions over and over again and me and robin were just like come on please can we have someone here we need someone here um and yeah i i honestly don't think this dispatcher actually could really understand what was going on and they sent they sent a really lovely office around and she was lovely. You know, I couldn't fault her. You know, she said, you know, she really did not want to arrest Will. And she was really worried. Well, he was really worried, not she was really worried. He was really worried because Will, being an expat, um, obviously, you know, over there, I know, because I've been over there in the past, I know that, you know, the cops do carry firearms and you know he was worried that there was going to be a cop with a gun in his face and was going to sh shoot him but no she was like you know she was really lovely she spoke to us all you know in turn um Will actually stayed at our place that night. Um, and, you know, he he turned to it because, you know, he was stressed about Poppy. He really was. You know, Robin was, at that time, you know, I don't blame her, but she was contemplating, you know, splitting with him because she had... You know, giving him an ultimatum a few times to say you need to stop drinking or we're done. Um, and yeah, he he has got a lot better. He has got a lot better. He's actually seeking help for it now. And, you know, she was like, and this cop was like, you know... I didn't want to arrest him. You know, I could have. I could have easily arrested him because of being drunk in charge of an infant. But, you know, I think because of the situation, she was like, I really didn't want to. So, yeah, she got our statements. She got his statement, you know, and everything. And, yeah, she just went on her way. Will, Will went to our place and stayed at our place for the night. Let's just say in the morning he was feeling a little bit stupid. He was feeling rather stupid the next day. And they went and saw Poppy the next day. You know, at the time Robin was saying, you're not seeing Poppy tomorrow because of what you've done. And, you know, if he was still, like, really bad in the morning, he, you know, I would have been like, yeah, no, you're not seeing Poppy. And, you know, uh, it, it was a really stressful situation for everyone involved. You know, I, I, I'll be honest, I still have nightmares about it. I still have nightmares about it. Because I couldn't believe how bad he was 
like when I got that phone call and then when I heard him on the phone yelling at Robin I the first thing that went into my mind was right how prepared are you to go to jail and you know I was like very prepared because you know I thought if he tries to hurt her I'm gonna beat the living hell out of him and I may be I may be five foot one I may be five foot one I may be very tiny the reason I know I'm five foot one is because my brother measured me recently because he thought I was like five foot six but no I'm five foot one um so I so yeah that was like you know I would never normally contemplate going to jail but with Robin who is basically like family to me and you know it was like when they dropped Dexter around she was like really apologetic and I just said to her Robin Ahana means family and of course you know the rest of that quote which I probably cannot say because otherwise I will get copyright strike and I really don't want that but yeah I said that quote to her because she is like she is like a sister to me I never had a sister but she's like that to me and I was like I'm prepared to go to jail for this if I have to hit him I will I will hit him and I will say look I hit him he was going to hit my friend so yes I hit him to protect a friend and then like Josh was like oh if if like something had happened you could have claimed insanity and I said well the issue of that is claiming to be insane at the time is so hard to prove So, yeah, that's that. Um, Christmas, I will get into my Christmas. My Christmas was okay, but I was, I was really, really unwell over Christmas. I was really sick. I had this, you can probably still hear it in my throat. I had this horrible cold, cough, fluey thing, but I still went to work. I still went to work. So on the... When was it? The... When was it? It was the... Was it the 23rd? I think it was. Yeah, it was the 23rd. I went into work. And I had absolutely no voice. I was whispering. And my manager, Dan, looked at me and he was like, are you well enough to work? And I was like, yeah, I'm well enough to work as long as I don't talk. Which is why I did a massive unboxing on the 24th of December, which if you were following my advent, then you would have seen it. But yeah, that is the main reason. Um, I'm still struggling with it a little bit. It's not as bad as it was. But, um... When I'm coughing, I am aware that there is some fluid in my lungs. And with my asthma, it's not a good thing. You know, having fluid, you know, in my lungs. So, yeah. Um, you know, uh, Christmas Eve happened. We went, we actually um, had my nieces round. Um, Katie and my brother Steve. Um, so I got to see them. I also saw them, obviously. I saw them on Sunday because they were there for the measuring of their bridesmaids dress, dresses. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, I always love seeing them. I always love seeing my nieces. They're, they're great. My nieces are great. Um... So, yeah, we got to see them for a little bit on Christmas Day. Um, 
which, you know, was probably the highlight. I was still feeling pretty rough. I actually, on the 24th, so we went to midnight now, I was feeling pretty rough. But I still went to Midnight Mass. I always try to, you know, if I'm, like, really tired and I don't go to church, I'll always at least try to go to church on Easter Sunday and on Christmas Eve for Midnight Mass. Those are my two, like, big things. Because, like I say, you know, I am a Christian. I might not be the best practicing one. But that's it. Um, but I support the LGBTQ. I'm bi myself. So, you know. But in my mind, you know, God created us all to be, you know, who we are. Whether we're gay, whether we're pan, we're pansexual, trans, etc, etc. Et you know, God created us to be like that. Yes, it says in the Bible um, that he created us to be, be a likeness of his own image. But that means, you know, that, you know, there might be a way he would like us to be, but he knows that we're human and he also gave us free will. Which, in my mind, because he gave us free will, he also created the LGBTQ. So, yeah, just go out there, love who you want to love, and, you know, just be you. Just be you. But, yeah, I, I believe that there is a God that loves all. Um, so, yeah, I went and did that on Christmas Eve. It was a really, like, cold, horrible night. So, <laughs> that was probably why it made me feel so rubbish. Um. What else happened? So, oh, yes, I was going on Christmas Day. So, Christmas Day, um, I saw my nieces for a bit. I gave them their presents and then they left. Um, my dad's um, ex-wife actually popped around for a bit so um, I'm the result of my dad's second marriage my two brothers are the result of his first and uh, yeah uh, his wife actually came well ex-wife um, came over you know to give the girls their gifts because I think they were all going out or something for lunch I don't know um, but no there's a really funny story of when I was seven and my brother used to take me out on my birthday you know and spoil me rotten um, I loved him and I still do love him um, but we went into a local coffee shop where where uh, his mum worked. <laughs> and me being seven years old, I know there's going to be some laughter in the comments. Me being seven years old, turned around to her and said, I know you, your daddy's old wife. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I, I had actually gone back to bed, so I didn't see her. Um, yeah, I was really, really out of it on Christmas. I, I spent about half of it asleep. Um, we tried to get my grandfather over. We couldn't. Um, so he, he basically lost all the energy in his legs. And the next day we actually, um, phoned an ambulance and he is currently back in hospital. So yeah, it wasn't the best Christmas, but it wasn't the worst. You know, I have had worse. Um, 
yeah, um, New Year happened, and um, yeah, I saw the New Year in with um, PJ and his friend George, uh, and we had some champagne and saw the New Year in. Uh, I had joked the previous day that we should run around the garden or run into the street naked, just as a joke. We didn't, because it was wet and it was raining. So, yeah, there was no way that I was, that that was going to uh, happen. But, yeah, that is, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm trying to think of... If there's anything else to say, so yeah, we, we, we saw the new year in, um, and we, um, yeah, we didn't run around the garden naked, um, but yeah, we saw the new year in and watched the fireworks, I th I'm trying to think what, I went to bed, I think, about one o'clock, half one, because all the fireworks going off, so, yeah, I went to bed pretty late, and then got up fairly early, I would say, because obviously, like I say, um, I drove my friend Robin to uh, her bridesmaid's appointment, I was, you know, I was like, I need to be there, so yeah, we'll do that. And then I think that was everything. Was that everything? So yeah, they got their they got their measurements. Um, I paid. I actually did pay for it today. Oh flip! What else have I done? Um, I think that's everything actually, to be honest. But yeah. Um, Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please hit that like button. Uh, consider subscribing and hit the bell uh, to be notified when I put up a video. And if you'd like to, please leave a comment. Um, so, yeah, everything that I've used uh, will be linked down below. So, uh, this cover minder won't be because this was in a uh, Diamond Art Club um, toolkit. But my pen, my tree, and my storage, and the release papers, light pad, etc. will be. So anyway, um, I will see you all next week. Thanks for watching. And like I say, see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye! Mm -hmm.